Now on News Channel 6 at 11, a decision on a local tap room's liquor license. We'll tell you what the judge ruled. Plus, a milestone birthday for one Aiken veteran. We'll tell you his secrets to a long life. And in-state tuition for out-of-state students. Why lawmakers say the plan is good for South Carolina as your news at 11 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Good evening, everyone. I am Tiffany Hobbs in for Brad and Jenny tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a judge ruling that a decision by Columbia County's Board of Commissioners to revoke stay social tap in tables alcohol license can stand. Judge James Blanchard saying in his ruling that stay did not meet the threshold set by county ordinance that a business must have at least 50% of its sales come from food in order to sell alcohol. The business was notified back in September that the county intended to revoke its alcohol license because it did not meet that threshold. Stay filed an appeal which was heard in a superior court. A temporary injunction allowed the business to continue serving alcohol until the judge made a decision. Today, that decision has has come and the judge ruled that stay did not meet the threshold and cannot serve alcohol. News Channel 6 is continuing to follow the developing story and we are working on getting a reaction to that ruling. The results in Richmond County from last Tuesday's Georgia Senate runoff are now official. The Board of Elections met this morning to certify those results. Elections Director Travis Daw says 47.7% of registered voters in Richmond County can cast their ballot in that runoff. He says that that was a high number. There is one more election this year, the House District 129 primary on December 20th. Daw says there are a lot of questions about who gets to vote in that race. I think many people are confused as far as whether or not they can vote in that election or not. We are encouraging people to either go online and look at the My Voter page to see if they're in that House district or to give our office a call. Daw says anybody in that district who registered to vote before November 21st is eligible to vote in that primary. Meteorologist Jenna Petracci joins us for a check of the weather. Jenna. Well, it was a pretty cool and cloudy day. We had those overcast skies over the weekend and to start this week. Notice our temperature started out at 50 degrees, which is well above average for this time of the year, but we only climbed into those upper 50s, so only 8 degrees warmer by the afternoon, high of 58 degrees. Nowhere near those records, though. 14 was the record low. 82 is the record high. Nowhere near those extremes. We'll be in those low to mid 50s once again tomorrow. Temperatures dropping into the upper 40s and mid 40s now in Aiken, Thompson, Evans sitting at 46 degrees, 51 in Augusta, still those low 50s in Waynesboro and Wrightsville as well. Dew points are in the low 40s in some parts of the CSRA. We're seeing some drier air filter in from the north, higher dew points to the south where there's still some cloud cover and moisture around, but winds coming in from the east for the most part, six miles per hour in Aiken, seven in Augusta, six as well in Waynesboro and five to the west in Sparta. Overall, a pretty pleasant evening, just the clearing clouds, no rain in the way on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam. You're looking over into downtown Swainsboro. Clouds are pushing towards the south, really only impacting some of our southern counties south of Augusta now. And all eyes are on the slow pressure system out towards the west. This is going to fire up some severe weather tonight. Already seeing a severe thunderstorm warning and even a tornado warning in the Oklahoma, Oklahoma Panhandle and up in Nebraska. Now notice this system will stretch all the way out towards Texas tonight impacting further into the south as we go into tomorrow. So we'll keep our eyes on that as it will be bringing us some rain here in the CSRA late in the day Wednesday into Thursday. But in the meantime, Tuesday looking good, mostly clear, but a cold start. Breezy and cool by the afternoon, mostly sunshine by 3 o'clock. And for your Wednesday, we'll start to see some rain late in the day into Thursday as well. And then we'll have that followed by some cooler temperatures over the weekend. I'll have all those details and I'll get your future cast coming up, but back to you, Tiffany. Thank you, Jenna. A local World War II veteran is celebrating his 100th birthday in a special way by taking his family and friends back down memory lane. News Channel 6's Nikita Dennis has the story.
Charles Light, a World War II veteran, is still making an impact in many lives at 100 years old. While serving in the Army, Lyde was into genealogy and history. Over the years, he documented his experience in the war through creative maps and pictures. Family and friends celebrated his 100th birthday to show his life's journey. He, we wanted to celebrate his birthday, but I knew that people coming would also want to see all of all about his life. So um, we tried to kind of do a historical timeline of from when he was born in 1922 all the way to now. It's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I sort of caught up on the people down there at the end. They, they lived to be 105. Light served in the Army from 1942 to 1946 and traveled the world, bringing his journey back to the Aiken community with plenty of stories to tell. From newspapers to war maps and journals, he wants to make sure his service in the Army is remembered. It's good to get home, yeah, but I got a little bit of the world, and uh, good to see all that. And plenty of support to help keep those memories alive. It's been very neat. He's had um, family here. He's had people from, he's been a member of St. John's for over 50 years. Those people, the people who take care of him now at Trinity on Lawrence have been here. So it's been really neat to see all the many different people from different um, eras of his life. In Aiken, Nikita Dennis, WJBF News Channel 6. What a legacy. Now, a message for parents of Columbia County middle school students tonight. District leaders say they were made aware of a social media rumor of a possible threat at the school. After an investigation by Columbia County deputies, they determined there was no evidence of a threat. School will go on as normal tomorrow, but there will be added law enforcement present as a precaution. A pre-filed bill in South Carolina House would offer in-state tuition to some out-of-state students. The bill is geared towards students in states that border South Carolina. It would cap the number of out-of-state students to get in-state tuition at 250 students per school. If passed, the law would be in effect for five years, at which time lawmakers would reevaluate whether or not to continue it. We need to make sure that we have the best and the brightest in South Carolina. And if uh, kids from North Carolina want to attend school in South Carolina um, and, and we can offer them a lower tuition, I don't see a big problem with it. If the legislation becomes law, it goes into effect for the 2024-2025 school year. A South Carolina mother and daughter are proving that you can do anything, even with a disability. Chloe Salsameda has the story. At the Swamp Rabbit Trail, you can find runners and rollerbladers. You can even find Jane Hart and her daughter Grayson. Grayson has a rare genetic disorder that causes seizures. She's nonverbal and requires a wheelchair. The doctor did tell us at six and a half weeks old she would not live to her first birthday. And on November 21st, a few weeks ago, she just turned 25. Hart says her daughter has always enjoyed the outdoors. In September, the two went to the Swamp Rabbit Trail for the first time. I've lived in Greenville so long, how have I not been on the trail? Hart pushed Grayson about five miles that day and embarked on a new journey. She decided they would spend the next few weeks walking the entire trail together. And I said, we're going to do it. And the Lord pushed us, you know, and he was there the whole time with us. Some parts of the trail weren't easy, but they pushed through. In November, the hearts arrived at Cleveland Park to walk the last stretch of the trail. But this area was hilly. Hart says she considered stopping. We got to the back, that really high hill on the back of the church. And I looked at Grace and I said, we're doing this. After months of walking, the hearts finally accomplished their goal. It was emotional, and I thought, God, we did the whole trail basically twice because wherever we would park, we would go one way and come back and then go another way and come back. Hart says she hopes their journey shows that anyone is capable of completing their goals. I want to put it out there that even though Grayson and other people are differently able, this is what I like to call it, it doesn't mean you can't. And I say, why not? You just have to get creative. In Greenville, Chloe Salsameda. Coming up, respiratory illnesses in children. How the Children's Hospital of Georgia is handling the increase.
now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Good evening. Time now is 11:13. It's a pretty pleasant night. You're taking a look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam at the Momentum Center. Beautiful Christmas tree lighting up. We do still have some lingering clouds, but those clouds are clearing and temperatures will drop once that happens. Still hanging on to those low 50s in Augusta. East wind of 7 miles per hour. Dew point in the mid 40s, showing some drier air moving into the area with much chillier temperatures from Aiken over to Crawfordville. Even some fog forming now in Washington and Crawfordville, where where sky have cleared 51 degrees in Evans 51 as well in Waynesboro Barnwell at 50 53 in Louisville and 56 in Millen in Sylvania where there's still some dense cloud cover so the clouds are pushing towards the south we will have a break from them tomorrow with high pressure building into the area but we're watching this low pressure system develop out towards Texas low up in Colorado that'll be generating a lot of snowfall and blizzard like conditions across the northern plains but it's going to be this warm front that we're keeping an eye on behind that is already some severe weather over in Texas up to Kansas and that warm front will be pushing through our area come Thursday followed by the cold front but in the meantime this will be impacting the parts of the deep south from northern Louisiana up into Arkansas then that system will move towards the east so we are expecting a severe weather outbreak tomorrow for our friends out towards the west but for us tomorrow it is going to be a nice and sunny day starting out on the cold side though upper 30s only climbing into the mid 50s by the afternoon. We'll see a chilly start to Wednesday morning as well. Then with the increase in clouds and that warm front passing, temperatures will rise to 52 degrees on Thursday, followed by much cooler air. It looks like we'll be in the low 30s all the way through next week. As for the high temperatures following a similar pattern, briefly rising up to 67 degrees for Thursday before dropping back down into the low 50s to finish off the week. It does look like the South will be dealing with a Arctic blast come the week leading up to Christmas. This is a look at December 18th through the 22nd. Some very cold air will be in place. Highs potentially only in the upper 40s to low 50s for the next several days to come. So definitely feeling like a December type or definitely feeling like December type weather here in Augusta with some wet conditions on the way mostly for Thursday just a 30 percent chance of showers for your Wednesday and you can see that on our future cast tomorrow at 6 a.m. we're going to have mostly clear skies some clouds still in our western counties but we will overall get a good amount of sunshine overcast skies though for Wednesday not a lot of rain definitely not a washout but it will be overnight into Thursday where those showers begin to come in from the west some heavy pockets coming down around Around morning commute traffic on Thursday and that'll be due to the warm front lifting in our area in between that front we could see some thunderstorms develop. However, severe weather is unlikely. The cold front will then push off towards the east coast with clearing skies behind it and that much colder air moving in for Friday. Lows tonight will be pretty cold as well. We'll see low 30s, some spots in the low 40s though where there is, will be some cloud cover. And for tomorrow, mostly sunny, topping off in those low to mid 50s. Over the next 10 days, we're seeing a lot of 50s in store for us. 67 though is the high on Thursday. Low temperatures will be down near freezing for the next several days as well with partly cloudy skies next week looking mostly dry by then. I guess that means it's time to get my long johns out. Yes, it is, <laughs> and I do not want to. Me neither. <laughs> All right, Children's Hospital of Georgia is seeing more kids this time of year, and doctors report it's a case of an increase of multiple viruses behaving differently. The folks at Chalk say RSV, influenza, and COVID are making kids sicker than before. Doctors say people wore masks during the pandemic, and that practice has changed, impacting children. They say there is no vaccine for RSV, and flu vaccines are down, but there are some things people can do to help children from getting sick. We know that RSV tends to be very aggressive in children less than one year of age. Um, so those are the children that we have to protect at home um, with good um, hand washing, uh, breastfeeding, isolating them and making sure that people that are sick are not around them. Children who are premature are also at a high risk for RSV. Still ahead, a review of the Uvalde Sheriff's Department. Why parents of Rob Elementary shooting victims are speaking out against the review. But first, the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina lottery are pick three, three, four, two. And the pick four winning numbers, zero, zero, seven, eight. And the fireball is six.
Today, county commissioners in Uvalde County, Texas, provided results from an independent review of its sheriff's department. Families of the victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting are speaking out. Ryan Chandler tells us why. It's not me. It is the children that you have to face. It is the, the, the thing you have to live with every single day. Jesse Rizzo lost his niece, Jackie, at the Robb Elementary School massacre more than six months ago. He's among the families wondering why this request for accountability has gone unanswered. It's unacceptable, inexcusable, and shameful. Families confronted county officials after they completed an independent review of their sheriff's office that did not address the Robb Elementary School shooting, learning only that the department did not have an active shooter policy until September of this year, four months after the shooting. It seems like this review is ignoring the elephant in the room. That, that, that is the term I used in describing. That's what everybody wants to know about. So I just talk about the procedure that they have in effect now. The community largely blames Uvalde County District Attorney Christina Mitchell for not releasing key evidence. She met with commissioners behind closed doors and ignored questions that followed. Who are you building a case against? These families. They're missing somebody that's not going to be there for the holiday. That gift that you normally would buy, they're not going to be able to buy that gift because there's nobody there, you know. And, and so what do you do? You go celebrate at their sacred ground, now, which is a cemetery. You know, that's painful. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. While we wait to see if the Braves will come to terms on a new deal with free agent Dansby Swanson, Swanson got married to soccer star and longtime girlfriend Mallory Pugh over the weekend. The Braves making a three-way trade on Monday. 
Atlanta trading for Oakland A's catcher Sean Murphy, who, according to GM Alex Anthopoulos, will split time at DH and catcher with all-star Travis Darno. Atlanta sending all-star DH and catcher William Contreras to the Brewers and two minor league pitchers to Oakland as part of a three-way deal. 28-year-old Murphy was a one-time gold glove winner in Oakland. He hit 250 with 18 home runs last year. The race for the NFC South title in the only playoff spot from the division. Tighter after the Panthers beat the Seahawks for their first road win of the season. Panthers and Falcons both 5 and 8, one game back of 6 and 7 Tampa Bay with four games left in the regular season. Big change coming for the Falcons over those four games. Monday, Arthur Smith naming rookie Desmond Ritter. The new starting quarterback in place of Marcus Mariota, Smith says it's a move designed to push the offense forward. Falcons have lost four of their last five. Ritter was the team's third round pick out of Cincinnati in the draft, but he's yet to take a snap in a regular season game. You know, roster moves. We did make a switch at quarterback, so Desmond Ritter will be the starter. It's a performance based decision. Obviously, where our circumstances are. We talked last time about trying to get over the hump in some of these close games and where we try to push the offense. We feel like it's the best decision uh, where he's at, where the team's at, uh, as we prepare to go out in New Orleans. Falcons at the Saints and then at the Ravens the next two weeks. Mentioned the Panthers win over Seattle. Former South Carolina Gamecock J.C. Horn had an interception in the win, and Sam Darnold got the win as the starting quarterback. Panthers have won three of their last four under interim head coach Steve Wilkes, and they control their own destiny for a playoff spot, win their final four games, and they win the division. They'll host the Steelers on Sunday. A lot of moves involving the South Carolina Gamecocks football program on Monday, including Marshawn Lloyd entering the transfer portal after leading the Gamecocks with 573 yards rushing, nine touchdowns. Meanwhile, there are reports that indicate Arkansas tight ends coach Dow Logans will be the Gamecocks' next offensive coordinator. And according to our friends at WSPA, the program has reportedly reached out to NC State transfer quarterback Devin Leary, which gives the impression Spencer Rattler could be moving on.
A new pizza joint in California has a pizza that costs thousands of dollars. Crestica just opened in West Hollywood. A pizza there called The One sells for 3,500 bucks. It's topped with gold flakes and truffles flown in from Italy. It's also for a good cause. $2,000 from each pizza goes to charity. And it's California pizza, not even New York pizza or Chicago. Right. Yeah, I'd say uh, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> Me too, I think so. Yeah. Well, for our forecast tomorrow, we'll finally see a little bit of sunshine. Temperatures will stay cool, starting out in the upper 30s, only making it to the mid-50s. Overcast skies return Wednesday and Thursday with an 80% chance of showers for the first half of the day on Thursday. Warmer temperatures as well than sunshine and colder temperatures to finish off the week. That is our report for now. Thank you so much for watching. Our next news is at 4.30 a.m. with Mary Morrison and Barkay Bishop. Good night.